Tell me a little bit about yourself and your involvement in IoT. So um, I'm uh, Naman Sheikh, and uh, I've been uh, involved with data for uh, close to 20 years. Um, and I started with uh, data warehousing, uh, and then moved into more analytics, predictive modeling, mm -hmm. data mining, and all of that. Okay. Uh, and then last four years, I have been very focused on uh, large-scale IoT, millions of devices, deployment, collecting data from them, uh, and turning that into uh, valuable uh, insights for large corporations. Uh, particularly in the utilities sector. In the utilities sector. Mm -hmm. sector. Now, what type of insights are you generally looking for? Um, so, what you are looking for is, uh, uh, I mean, traditionally, um, you, IoT's biggest impact is on business process innovation, operational okay. excellence, right? So, you are looking business for business process innovation. Innovation, right? So, you have right. existing business process, you have activities going on, right. but your cost of carrying out that operation is high. Right. And you going okay. to try and see if I can get more granular information uh, from my IoT sensors and try to better understand, do I really need to replace this part? It's, okay. it's fine, right? Okay. So you, you may have an anecdotal, traditional um, method that, okay, every three months, go do maintenance on this, right? And you've got 10 engineers who go out and do that maintenance. Well, if you have IoT on that device or those devices, then you may not need to repair them every three months or uh, do some replacement every three months. You may be able to, on some of them, uh, stay as long as four, five, six months. Okay. And that way, you can cut down your 10 engineers to maybe six. So and for the utility, from a utility perspective, you're saying then for these are for the road crews or, or what is it for? Um, utilities, the biggest thing is their load. Um, so as the load goes up, uh, the demand goes up, right. the supply has to go up. Right. And the supply is where they make the money because they're buying power from generators. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so nuclear is the cheapest, then there is coal, natural gas, and then wind and solar are a little more on the expensive right. side, right? Mm -hmm. So the more they know about the demand, the better they are at uh, uh, hedging or securing the supply. So the demand, you don't know. I mean, uh, when you hit it, only then you oh, man, it's, it's too hot today. Wait. Everyone is to uh, to turn on price. their, yes. Um, so what they do is, uh, with smart meters, they have a very accurate uh, predictor of what's going on with an individual customer. Right. Not just a zip code level or True. region level, which they have been doing for years. Um, and they, they look at temperature and say, okay, well, city of Baltimore, if temperatures drop by four degrees, load goes up by X kilowatt, right? So those type of anecdotal and some statistical mm. measures are there that they have been operating with. Okay. Now, with, uh, with smart meters deployed on every single um, customer, yep. they have a more accurate situation uh, and, and assessment of what exactly is going to be the load. And, and they can look at a load profile of an individual customer rather than of a larger region. Okay. And, and that's the key to IoT, that you are able to go deeper at a more granular level to look at things um, specifically, not just broad, general um, assumptions that business had been operating on for years. Yeah, no, I like that. Well, why don't we, why don't we go more general for our audience? And, and what do you need to do... I guess, what needs to be done even before you start your IoT, your analytics pro program for IoT? So um, I would separate the analytics program from mm -hmm. IoT okay. um, analytics program. So if you have a precedent of data getting generated from your traditional ERP and operational systems and that data comes in and your mid-level managers are used to looking at data and taking decisions based on data. So if you have a data-driven culture right. um, and the last few years you may have uh, augmented that with additional data mining or data sciences type of uh, methods which are now widely and more uh, cheaply available. Um, so if you have that culture, uh, then I would say that from an analytics standpoint, you are a mature organization. Okay. Now you are ready to augment uh, or, or I should say complement that uh, culture with additional source of data coming from IoT, from devices, from cell phones, uh, from sensors that you put on mm -hmm. uh, to your warehouses or factories or whatnot. Um, so, so the key is to assess whether you are a data or analytically mature organization and then decide if you want to go IoT. Because if you are not, then you may want to get that out of the way first before okay. you turn on the 
the um, um, tap on IoT data start to come in and, and you have no existing processes, what to do with this data, how do I react to this mm -hmm, data, mm -hmm. uh, what does this really mean? If you look at Google and Facebook, these type of companies, they started from scratch with data-driven uh, business processes, sure. right? E everything they do is data-driven. And they don't have physical infrastructure as such, no moving logistics trucks or warehouses and stuff like that, right? So, so they were able to jump onto social media devices, cellular data, all of that very quickly because mm -hmm. they had the culture. But if you look at uh, an organization that has been operating for 100 years, old school manufacturing, you have a supply chain system still maybe running on mainframe, right? Um, and a lot of the older um, operational systems have a batch process. Right. So every night they do a whole bunch of computation. If you put IoT even in there, right, the data is coming live, they're going to stack the data up throughout the day. And at night, they're going <laughs> to put it into the batch process. So what did you really gain from turning on or the investment yeah, in, in IoT? Yeah, a little more data. A little more right. data, right. but the real benefit of IoT is more like immediate decision making, that, right. that machines should be able to quickly figure out what's happening and readjust the uh, business process accordingly. That requires uh, an existing cu data-driven culture. Um, and uh, so you work on that first, Mm -hmm. uh, and then you move slowly move into uh, into IOT. So are you saying then that if a company isn't a data-driven company that they should not start with IOT? They can um, undertake a pilot or specific yeah. uh, use cases, specific business unit that has a need. For instance, uh, marketing departments or finance departments typically are very good with data, mm -hmm. already are. Um, but it's not necessary that your HR may be very good with, uh, with the data, right? So if you have an existing uh, organizational uh, unit uh, or, or department that is pretty savvy, then that's where you should look at starting. Okay. Um, okay. And, and then slowly get the benefits uh, of that over to other people and kind of start to get them on board with the overall philosophy. So let, let's say then um, you are a data-driven uh, organization. What type of data? What type of data are you collecting now? And then, how do you augment it? And what's the best way to kind of uh, introduce IoT into that environment? So, two ways to look at it. One is that the frequency of the data. So, you may have. So, for instance, again, using the utilities example, mm -hmm. meter reads come in once a month, or maybe once every three months. With smart meters, right? No, no, traditionally. Okay, traditionally. Right, so we've been doing that for 80, 90 this is years. This going around and, and measuring it, right? <laughs> Correct, so yeah. somebody actually comes up and they physically take the reading. and Maybe then that, wirelessly. Um, but, yeah. And that gets logged in and, and they, right. uh, they estimate a couple of months and they only read actual ones every quarter because it's expensive to send somebody out sure. there to every single household, right? Yeah. So, the f the, uh, so the frequency is one aspect of uh, creating new data or augmenting the existing data. Mm -hmm. So now you don't need to have that infrastructure to go and do these reads and put that data in and there are errors and all sorts of things once a month. Now you have live streaming data coming in. So the frequency increases. Right. That's one aspect. Yep. Well, what does that mean? Well, it reduces some cost uh, of your operational activity. Some errors are, are eliminated. Uh, and then because, uh, in particular in the energy industry, um, they move to an hourly rate. Mm -hmm. So it's a commodity, it's traded, mm -hmm. yep. and there's an hourly rate. So now you have a better assessment of what to build the customer because during that hour they did this. Previously right. they used to get the monthly read and then they would use some statistics to break it down on an hourly basis to estimate what you really used, right? So, so, so the one, first thing is the frequency. Okay. Uh, that there is existing, existing data, IoT is able to speed that up and well, you have more, more immediate view of, yeah. of the same thing. Okay. Um, the second aspect is new data which you never had before. Um, so for instance, if you uh, are into maintenance of, um, or we'll take a sim simpler example, um, oil change on a car, right? Everybody knows, I oh, 3,000 miles, go and change the oil. Well, if you are, I'm a very conservative driver, um, I try to maximize my fuel efficiency. I, I don't hit brakes too often. I don't speed up uh, like, like crazy screeching and all of that. Unlike my so, daughter, though. Um, correct. So, so then my uh, oil change may be only needed at 5,000 
uh, miles, right? So right there, in a, on a yearly basis, on an average driving basis, right. I've saved three or four oil changes sure. just by being a conservative driver. Yeah. But if you are not measuring the viscosity of the oil or the um, uh, like uh, carbon elements within the oil, if you do or something, some uh, uh, ingredients that indicate uh, high usage, if you are not using that. Um, then you wouldn't know, and you are stuck with 3,000 mile oil change, 3,000 mile. So now a new data come, type of data is starting to come in with the new sensor that you put into your oil tank or into your engine, and now you actually know what is the viscosity, and some of the yeah. luxury cars now have that, uh, or have had that for a couple of years now, that they give you a percentage. What is the percentage? And that way you can now go longer before you're ready for an oil change. That's right. so, so by getting new kind of data, you were able to again improve your efficiency or your operational efficiency. Excellent. Okay. Well, so so and that's using in this case predictive maintenance. You know, is what you're is what you're describing. Correct. Sense, right. Yes. Um, so let's talk broadly. What are the steps that an enterprise must take to start this implementation? What, what broad strokes? But what would be the steps? Um, so my view is that you should look at your existing metric that your operation lives by. Mid-level managers, directors, uh, there are certain operational uh, metrics that they look at at month for example? end. For uh, example, for instance, like a number of cases closed, number of okay. orders shipped, okay. uh, number okay. of parts moved. Yeah. I mean those I like type it. of like those it. type of uh, very simple metric that uh, a director and their department is kind of responsible for. The director's paycheck and and bonus is tied to that metric, right? And it gets aggregated and goes all the way up, and you report up to the CEO and and the board, right? So so you should look at some of the important metric that everybody understands, everybody lives by, mm -hmm. and and you try to see if there is a way that IoT can help you improve that metric, uh, maybe because you were getting data, so again, going back to the frequency, maybe you only get data on the 28th of the month, right. finally, and then you have two days to quickly figure out how did you do on the month, right? And then on the first of the mm -hmm. month, you have the number, that, okay, last month, this is what we did, right? Mm -hmm. um, so now, with IoT, you may be able to produce this type of same analysis on a weekly basis. So or identify the metric. Right? Identify the metric yep. that everybody understands and live by and it's important to them. Yep. And then show that how IoT can help that metric. Like if you have more visibility into the metric, you will be able to improve upon it. This way, IoT doesn't become a, a fancy tech project. This way, everybody, their skin is in the game. Right? right. And, and so if their skin is in the game, uh, then they will be uh, more willing to change, readjust their processes, mm -hmm. help out with the project, make sure it's running along fine, whatever they need as their input into the project. Right. So everyone has a buy-in because they have a stake in there. Right. It's not just a CTO, a forward-looking CTO trying to convince everyone, hey, we need to do this. Um, and, and so that's my, my view, that take something which is important, which is existing, and see IoT, uh, how it can help, uh, and, and then go with that. Now, very quickly, Give us an, an idea of the of the resources, both human and capital, that should an or, that an organization will need to budget for to make this happen. Um, so I, I have a very um, skewed, or I should say, um, uh, 80, 180 degree opposite view of of this situation here, um, because the let's take the data sciences mm -hmm. for example. So uh, three years ago, there was a McKinsey report that came out that we are short by 100, right. 200 thousand data scientists. Right. Um, Almost um, all top MBA and engineering programs now have some kind of a data sciences uh, graduate level program. And, and I think that's just, uh, that's not practical. Um, it's uh, not sustainable. Um, we got to look at uh, data sciences in particular, which is a very important piece of IoT and data analytics. But we got to look at it as a, uh, the way we train uh, managers in finance, right? So anybody who becomes a manager has some budgetary responsibility, has to play with Excel sheets, have to understand numbers, have to live by the plan and bu have to submit budgets and plans and then live by them and track costs mm -hmm. and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter where they came from, what background they came from, they had to learn it, right? right. Because it's essential for them to do their job. Yeah. To me, data sciences is kind of similar. 
everyone has to learn to do it. As an individual, how are you using your battery or your data plan on your, on your device, right? You got to figure that out, what's going on. So you have to become savvy. Now, the problem is right now that the amount of knowledge gap is so significant that if you are not a geeky mathematics or statistics type of a guy, mm. then you won't be able to to get there. So my view is that data science overall as a discipline has to be simplified, has to be broken down, get it to a point where you can do it in Excel, right? right? And, and then everybody can do it. So if you look at today, that's a big problem. That's a, that's a, a gap, a, a skills gap that is not easy to fulfill and, and it's expensive. You bring these guys in, they do a couple of projects and then they move on to something else. So right. it's difficult to retain right. them, hire right. them. Right. Um, so, but it'll take some time uh, for this discipline to be broken down to a point where um, short courses, just like a manager just go through the, yeah. goes mm. through a finance course and stuff like that. Yeah, no, um, I, I like that. But maybe maybe what you could do is bring them in. They can they can put together an interface for you. They can bring up your KPIs. They can bring up these metrics that you were talking about. At least at least configure it, and then you can use it more as a tool. Uh, correct. So my view is that the 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 task is to start thinking data. Okay. So data scientists uh, or analysts or consultants, whoever you bring in um, to fill up this gap, should be educating your mid-level managers right. and your IT staff. And they shouldn't be actually doing the work uh, because then once they leave, um, you again have the same problem. Right. So, so that is one area where, where uh, human uh, skill factor is actually uh, significant. Uh, the gap is actually significant. Uh, then um, the other side, of course, is uh, with, with big data. And, uh, and what I have found, personal experience, and I'm going to be talking about that in, in my session as well, that uh, we dealt with uh, close to seven or eight million smart meters. So that's seven, eight million devices that are kind of smart, that are deployed. There is a whole operational side of deploying them and all of that. But mm -hmm. the, the data count, the record count that we are dealing with is one trillion. So one trillion records, I mean, I, I wow. have not come number. across anybody who has uh, dealt with, with that. I mean, uh, maybe Google and Facebook, these guys do. Um, but uh, so it, in terms of actual data disk, it's 40 terabytes. That's a lot. So actually it's not. 40 terabyte is manageable. Most organizations Over are- Over a period of time. Oh, 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 yes, but oh, organizations are capable of handling 40 terabytes of data. So, so the number of records scares you, that, oh, we've never done that. So what kind of skill or what kind of capital investment are we going to need? Is this per year or per, or per day? Three or? year. This is a three year. This oh, is over three years. Oh, okay. Over, okay. over three years, right? right. So, so IoT scares people with the data volume. But if you look at the storage, you will realize that the data is manageable. Your processing infrastructure should be able to handle, so it'll be a, uh, it'll handle be that. It's, it's not a big gap, but the data sciences gap is much bigger. Well, um, thank you. That was that, that was really good, and I like it because it was it was more hands-on experience, and you've been there, and and that's great advice. Um, where can our viewers find out more about you and what your company is doing in IoT? Um, so I um, am uh, actually heavily invested in uh, four startups um, as advisor, investor, um, consultant, kind of uh, in some capacity. Um, but what I'm doing, um, inspired by the Open Course Fair. Mm -hmm. of uh, MIT and mm -hmm. Harvard and those guys, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Khan Academy that has done wonders for mm -hmm. mathematical training. Um, I'm creating a portal for data training. I like it. Um, it's going to be one-stop shop. Everything will be free, available. Nice. There will be design guidelines, project management templates, costing templates uh, in Excel in there that you can download and, and manage your projects. So we are, uh, a group of professionals are putting together a whole bunch of uh, intellectual capital um, and collateral that you can use in your IoT projects. And not just IoT, it's overall data management. Uh, so metadata, data governance, all of these uh, topics under data are going to be in, in one place. And so where it, would that place be? Uh, uh, so my website, astrom.com, uh, is where we're going to set that up. Uh, and the launch date for that is March 1st. Excellent. I'll put that in the show notes. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much.